Willkommen im AI for EU Café. Wie immer begrüßen wir erstmal alle Teilnehmer und auch unseren Sprecher heute. Das ist Mihai Dattu. Und Aber wir fangen langsam an, weil die Teilnehmer kommen jetzt erst. Der Titel heute ist Earth Observation Big Data Challenges. The AI Change of Paradigm. And as I said, Mia Datku will be our speaker. He's from German Aerospace Center, DLR, in Oberpfaffenhofen in Germany. Not so easy to say. And my name is Carmen McWilliams. I'm always here, moderator and organizer. Myself, I'm a director of Grassroots Arts and I'm partner in the European AI for You project. And I just always want to tell you that we are recording this session. This is a live session where we will later also put the recording on the platform. And please, no confidential information shall be shared in this cafe session, in this cafe. The speaker can express their personal view and opinion. This is not necessarily the official AI for you project opinion. And also for you who may want to know what is actually the AI for you cafe, the AI for you web cafe offers a series of live web sessions open to the public. The cafe is an online forum to gain insights into the European AI scene. Participants get the chance to share knowledge and experiences and meet stakeholders from various areas of AI research and application. And this is an interactive session. As our speaker is live, you can also ask after the presentation questions. You will find on the right side a panel, and <coughs> there you will see the title questions, and you can type them in if you like. And we will read them after the presentation, so me, I can answer them. But you can also, if you want, after the presentation, raise your hand. There is a hand um, button. And if you want, we can also give you the mic. So now, again, I want to welcome our speaker. It's a pleasure to have you here, Miai. Thank you. And I will now introduce your CV, Miai Daktu, Daktu received the MS and PhD degrees in electronics and telecommunications from the University Politecnica Bucharest, Romania in 1978 and 18, 1986. And in 1999, he received the title Habilitation à Diriger de Recherche in Computer Science from University Louis Pasteur Strasbourg in France. Currently, he is senior scientist and data intelligence and knowledge discovery research group leader with the Remote Sensing Technology Institute, IMF, of the German Aerospace Center, DLR, in Oberpfaffenhofen, and professor with the Department of Applied Electronics and Information Engineering, Faculty of Electronics, Telecommunication and Information Technology, UPB. From 1992 to 2002, he had a longer invited professor assignment with the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology, ETH Zurich. From 2005 to 2013, he has been professor holder of the DLR CNES chair at Paris Tech, Paris Institute of Technology, and Telecom Paris, in Telecom Paris. His interests are in data science, machine learning, and artificial intelligence and computational imaging for space application. He's involved in the big data from Space European, ESA, NASA, and national research programs and projects. He's a member of the ESA Big Data from Space Working Group. He received in 2006 the Best Paper Award, IEEE Geoscience and Remote Sensing Society Prize, and in 2008, the National Order of Merit with the rank of Knight. For outstanding international research results awarded by the President of Romania in 1987 
the Romanian Academy Prize Trajan Boya for the development of SAADI image analyzer system and activity in image processing. So he is IEEE fellow, he is holder of the 2017 Blaise Pascal Chair of CEDOIC CNAM CNAM. So now, after this introduction, and I see we have a lot of participants on air. Thank you for everybody coming. And I hand over now the mic as well as also the control to Miai. He will make the presentation himself. And again, enjoy. I will do it now. I've changed the moderator. Mia has now the control. You can do it now, Mia. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Carmen. Thank you very much for making this webinar possible, organizing this very well. Hello, everyone. Thank you for attending. So I would uh, start now. I uh, share the screen with the presentation. I see it well, no? Mia, I see it well. I think everybody sees it super. Presentation models. Okay. So, so today's topic, some uh, uh, it's earth observation, big data challenges, the artificial intelligence change of paradigm. So uh, I would start with uh, an acknowledge, uh, acknowledging uh, my colleagues uh, at uh, DLR in the data intelligence and knowledge discovery team. Uh, to acknowledge uh, the uh, Share International for Les Pascal in Paris and uh, the Cedric Research Center for Informatics. Uh, at uh, the Conservatoire National Art and Metier, Unical Space, a cooperation of TLR with the Town München, and also my colleagues in the team of uh, Research Center for Spatial Information, Geospace Tech, at uh, University Polytechnic in Bucharest. Uh, I would uh, uh, I structure the presentation uh, in, uh, let's say, uh, three parts an uh, uh, introduction, presenting actually the main. Uh, um, uh, reasons is a background of uh, um, uh, the use of artificial intelligence in uh, earth observation and uh, the specificity. Uh, later, I go over the challenges, exemplifying uh, solutions which have been provided. And in the last part, I go to the newest uh, development in artificial intelligence with very specific, very particular solutions, problems, challenges for. Uh, satellite uh, uh, imagery. Uh, in the beginning, I will start uh, with a one minute movie uh, for which we would like to acknowledge uh, IRD and ARTE, the German national television channel, ARTE is a German French television channel, and also Professor Peter Baumann at the Jacobs University, uh, which made possible uh, this movie. It's one minute from a longer movie which is available on, uh, on the internet. And using this uh, one minute movie uh, to present actually which are the objectives of my team. So which are the objective of uh, uh, big data uh, to solve uh, problems in Earth observation. So we have many sensors in space. The sensors they are Earth observation, but also planetary astrophysics. Uh, these sensors in space, they are equipped with a multitude of instruments. The data, the signals recorded by these instruments are uh, downloaded, transmitted to Earth. So this is a, a digital uh, library of DLR. And the instrument signals are transformed by computation in uh, images, satellite images. This huge volume of data, it is stored in big archives. This is a 50 uh, petabytes archive of DLR storing uh, uh, satellite images in the beginning of remote sensing in the 80s, up to now, and continuing storing this. And uh, preserving, perpetuating for long term, this is a huge value in uh, information. However, this data is digital. It's difficult to access it. The objective of my team, my colleagues, is to transform the digital data in meaningful, easy to understand. So it is a PhD in an immersive environment, computer reality like, and we project the images in the cave, in 3D, and when the operator is looking to an image, the system understands, it's a machine learning, the system understands how to project this data and where we have to look 
we discover quite new. So it's a new kind of artificial intelligence projecting big two-dimensional spaces in such a way to become semantically meaningfully easy to understand. So I use this movie to make the introduction of subjective. So we need to develop uh, algorithms, but also systems and tools which to transform digital data, which is specifically acquired by sensor instruments, which is different from other kinds of data, meaningful information for the users. And one of the particularity in uh, the first observation, it is the divergence of the thematics. So compared with many other fields, first observation is covering a multitude of fields. I, I will uh, present on this slide only six of them, probably uh, a little bit more particular. Everyone knows about application uh, of uh, most things in uh, agriculture, uh, in ocean, uh, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, forestry, uh, urban monitoring. So in here, I actually uh, underline uh, the climate change, which is a major impacting application of observation and uh, object recognition, uh, damage in infrastructure, deforestation or the mining or illegal mining, which are again extended field, so only to show the diversity. So we have to face uh, many use cases, many user perspective conjectures in to make value of the data. So, Earth observation, uh, it is a uh, convergence Hi. of technologies. May I just interrupt yes. you for one second? May I? Uh, maybe we need to put the video out because the audio is not perfect. Maybe we, your video, can you maybe, um, I think it gets better your audio if you just click on this video button. I, I need to identify the video button. A video button is like on the right control. You don't see it. Okay, then just continue. I'm sorry for interrupting. I was just like. Yes, no. Uh, no. I'm afraid it's not to touch the wrong button, so I'm not very much. Yeah, no, so the interface. Just continue. Sorry for interrupting. Okay. It's it's fine. Okay. So I'm back on the slides. So uh, as observation, it's a, a convergence of technologies. So actually, uh, satellite images, uh, they cannot be interpreting without having knowledge about the mission, about the orbit, the time of acquisition, uh, the sensor, the model, the instrument, the instruments on the satellite platforms are complex. They can work with the various resolution or the, in a different spectral uh, or polymetric uh, setups. Uh, we need to know the control of the mission, how the acquisition is planned. Uh, we need to build the ground segment, how the satellite data are processed, which are the parameters in the processor, because they depend on the performance of the products. Definitely, we need information platforms to distribute the data, something happened, uh, and uh, to make it available to the user. And definitely, we need to have the methods of science and the application methodology uh, integration of values. So, as observation is a complex uh, technological convergence and the challenges which are raised in uh, artificial intelligence for Earth observation, they refer to mission intelligence, sensor intelligence, data intelligence, application intelligence, business intelligence. And they cover all the, from the user, their data, sensor, mission, and the architecture of the mission. So this was the first conclusion, uh, uh, and I will uh, uh, further elaborate on this. I'm going now to uh, present these challenges with uh, results obtained recently uh, in a research or a technology project. So the sensor intelligence. So in here, actually, we have the following example. We have the uh, Copernicus Sentinel-1, the synthetic capture radar, uh, which is uh, uh, illuminating with microwave scene, like uh, the urban area, receiving the echoes back and generating a satellite image. This is called a monostatic radar image. However, the echo on the buildings or the infrastructure can be received on a set of antennas, which is on the roof of the university. So this set of antenna gives a diversity in the information because it's a diversity in the geometry of the phase. This diversity from the set of antenna can be further exploited by, let's say, modern signal processing like compressive sensing or deep learning, and we can obtain a new information. So in here we have all the from uh, mission orbit, because we have to know precisely the orbit to process 
to understand the signals, configuration of the antenna, which is the sensor itself, and all the methods which deal with uh, artificial intelligence up to getting new kind of information, extending, adding new value to the uh, transmitting signals uh, by the mission. So uh, the first example, it is computation imaging. So artificial intelligence is broadening in our observation because of these convergence of technologies to many fields. Computation imaging, it is one example. So here we have the example by static, previously presented, where we receive echoes from transmitted by the satellite with a ground-based antenna. We can combine these echoes also with a ground-based transmitter antenna, and we obtain new kind of products, a new kind of information, which is increasing the value of the satellite uh, 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 mission. Uh, uh, formation flying. So uh, today we talk about uh, uh, constellations and also formation flying. So in here we extend the idea of using uh, the radar, the sensor, uh, in a different way. Uh, satellites flying together, they communicate, they have radio links. We, in uh, this project, we uh, use a radio link to determine, to measure the relative position of the two satellites. The precise position, the knowledge of precise position of satellites is very, very important because we can, with this, uh, uh, simulate uh, instruments in space which cannot be implemented on a single platform. They are too large uh, for this. So in here, we have an example of uh, 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 using the communication and uh, in uh, cooperation with GMV, uh, we did a test on uh, simulating uh, the platform satellite in the advanced uh, robotic uh, uh, test bed. Uh, satellite images, they are never uh, interpreted by themselves. With measurements in situ to validate, to calibrate our data, we need measurements in situ in such a way to enrich, to complement our data. So we have networks of sensors, and today sensor networks are very, very spread around. So the Internet of Things is one of the examples, and uh, social media, uh, social networks or GPS uh, uh, information, which are complementing and enriching the satellite uh, uh, information with mutual and very, very complementary information. So in situ, uh, data utilization is one of the major uh, uh, desiderata objectives in the Copernicus uh, programs. So we integrate all these signals from satellites for heterogeneous sensors on ground with maps or other kind of information models in platforms. These platforms, they are advanced IT technology, uh, including uh, visualization, database, communication, processing, artificial intelligence, and they enable user to access in an easy, automatic way the content of the information. So we change from data access to information content to semantic, to knowledge. Definitely, in uh, the last few years, the attention uh, was attracted in the field of artificial intelligence by deep learning. However, deep learning uh, in Earth observation has a particularity. It needs to be a physical deep learning because we want to extract not only the objects in the satellite images, we want to extract the physical meaning, like signatures physical parameter observed by a polarimetric sensor. So in here, the polarimetric data is transformed in uh, features which are representing physical quantities of the observed uh, land cover. So uh, data must be presented to users, to people, in a very easy way. So big data uh, transformation information needs a communication channel to the user. That's visual data and visualization of the data is very important. So we need to present uh, uh, simple, understandable abstracts of our data. And visualization is helping to do this. So we can ex uh, examine large volume of data in visual way, in very easy way to be uh, understood. So uh, as a summary, the Earth Observation Data Intelligence uh, has to deal with all the processing uh, from the sensor model uh, to the uh, Earth observation system, to the semantic knowledge extraction, to human machine communication, uh, data fusion from various sources, data mining, discovery, search engine querying for uh, information, uh, the, uh, calibration, and uh, the data model of the uh, uh, Earth product. So, uh, data intelligence, the same as Earth observation, it is a field of convergence of uh, various uh, technologies and uh, field of science. So, uh, just to 
stress on uh, this uh, uh, aspect. Artificial intelligence and observation has to deal with mission intelligence, like orbit, configuration of the uh, uh, satellite platform, sensor intelligence, data intelligence, application intelligence, business intelligence, and discovering the entire chain, user, data, sensor, mission, and mission architecture. So I go now uh, to uh, present uh, uh, a selection of uh, uh, the most important challenges. So the first challenge is uh, the multi-sensor and multi-modality nature of the data, which is uh, uh, to be processed, to be analyzed uh, in Earth observation. So data is multi-spectral, so uh, invisible like uh, RGB, but also going uh, uh, far to infrared sensor. Synthetic aperture radar with various polarization, uh, with various wavelength from uh, X band 3 cm, C band 5 cm, L band 20 cm, and uh, soon to P band uh, uh, about uh, 1 meter, but also other kind of instruments like radiometer, altimeters, only to merit few of them. Uh, Earth observation, they are coming not only with a signal, like the image, they also they are accompanied by metadata. We cannot understand this if we don't know the location, the time, the instrument parameter, how the um, signal was acquired, orbit information, uh, uh, product uh, processing levels. Uh, uh, satellite Earth observation data, it's almost never interpreted uh, in isolation. Always user, they uh, uh, recall uh, geographic information system or uh, uh, maps like uh, various thematic maps like vegetation topography, uh, which are coming in a different digital format with uh, textual descriptors and the model evaluation. So uh, satellite images need to be integrated uh, with in situ information, uh, either Internet of Things. Uh, <coughs> so in, here we have diversity of uh, large sensor networks measuring uh, air, water content, or in situ photography, measurement of physical parameter. Location, multimedia local uh, awareness, GPS taking spatial context are additional information which helps and enrich the air situation data. Internet and social networks and mobile communications they are a fantastic evolution. So recently, in the last uh, three, four years, they become and complement fantastically the air situation. So uh, all these challenges actually they are uh, mapped in uh, uh, the design, the need to have design of uh, uh, systems which are able to integrate all this data. Integration means from the understanding of the different file format, but also the data fusion, the machine learning, which is able to learn from various heterogeneous sources, like to enrich the Earth observation with information which is coming from a different source complementary. So uh, in such a platform, and here, for instance, we integrate Lucas, Lucas, which is a European uh, database. Uh, every uh, three years, operators they go and uh, take pictures in a grid of two by two kilometers, indexing the pictures. So there are pictures north, south, east, west, indexing the picture with GPS location and with metadata. So this database is updated every three years. It's a huge value for Earth observation and many other applications. So this information in situ photography, it is uh, integrated with uh, Earth observation products and also with uh, other uh, third party services like uh, maps. So this is an example of integration of uh, uh, GIS and uh, uh, Lucas database uh, in a system where one could make a data selection a query for various uh, semantic category of uh, land cover agriculture crops like uh, 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 vineyards or uh, corn, and making a change analysis over the period of observation. In this case, it's three years, 2009-2012. Uh, uh, this data is further integrated with uh, multispectral, in this case, a world view, and the TerraSadix, very high resolution uh, multispectral and uh, SAR data. Uh, and uh, they could become uh, verification, training data, but also object data fusion in such a way to have more information more precise information extracted from the data. So we need to make thin understanding. And in this example, I go uh, from an observation, a single observation, synthetic aperture radar. In this observation, we have two similar objects, two bright parallel lines. We observe the area with a multispectral sensor. In the multispectral sensor, the scene is the same scene, looks different. We have, instead of having two 
parallel bright lines, which computer vision will decide they are similar objects. In the uh, optical data, we have two parallel bright lines, which looks like a highway or a bridge. And instead of having bright two lines, we have only dark line. If we have the map, on the map, we identify the bridge and the highway. So understanding the fusion of this data and the machine learning uh, should clarify, should reveal the semantic of the object. However, one of the objects in the uh, map is not present. But we have a picture from this point in this direction. And this picture reveals the nature of the object, this one, which is a power line support for the railway. And the double line in here, it is not an object. The double line is a signature, the reflection of the microwave on this metallic part, and a double reflection on ground and back to the satellite. So satellite images are not images. Uh, they are a, a, a doppelganger of the reflection on the scene. And we need to invert, not from the image to the object, but from the image to the scattering phenomena, to the signature, and the signature to identify the object. So it's a different problem with many other problems in the image or computer vision. So <clears throat> semantic extraction. So <clears throat> definitely uh, computer vision and pattern recognition are fields which are uh, enriching as observation. However, we have specific tasks in semantic description, and these are mainly quantitative measure and physical meaningful parameter extraction. Compare with picture photography by uh, any camera, in the sensor, in the satellite images, we have these uh, signatures and we have physical quantities like quantity of crop, uh, uh, biomass, uh, chlorophylla, or the temperature of the ocean. Uh, because of the nature of the multimodalities of the sensors, we need to uh, deal with the problem of registration. Registration refers not only among satellite images, it means registration with other in situ information or other sources of data. And at the end, we need to deal with uh, the fusion of information from various structures. And we need to uh, deal with uh, a huge variability of scene and classes. So these are some challenges which have to be faced. We give an example now uh, with a uh, satellite image time series. So satellite image time series are now uh, probably one of the most successful product of first observation. So after 30 years, 40 years of satellite observation, and with the continuations and new sense on Copernicus, we can observe almost every sea site on Earth for a long period of time. So this is a Landsat time series in Bucharest, 84 to 2012, uh, from 120 images. This series was continued recently with the Sentinel data. So these data tubes of data, uh, they contain huge information of high complexity. So patterns are not anymore uh, lake, forest. Patterns, they are in three dimension, the evolution patterns. So a pattern it is a change of a natural landscape construction area in an artificial lake. Pattern, it's a change of construction area in a, 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 a parliament palace in Eucharist. A pattern, it is all the object in 3D, spatial and temporal evolution. Pattern, it is spatial change from agriculture to a residential area. Again, space and time. All these patterns, they have value when they are correlated with external data. So we correlate with demographic information, with the area, and we can make prediction, which is uh, very important in uh, urban uh, planification, for instance. It is just one example. So uh, sensors in space, they are beyond visual perception. So sensors like multi spectra, they have three channels like RGB, where we can understand the image like a water body and a vegetation of the border. However, this sensor, they have information in other 10 bands which are going uh, to infrared. Uh, visual interfaces, they can use only three bands of GB, and RGB is confusing. And we need to develop like a deep sensors, uh, artificial sensors, which are transforming the multispectral channels in a RGB visual image, but preserving similarities and dissimilarities. So in the RGB, these three objects they are different. They have different colors. However, the sensor with certain bands uh, tells that they are very similar. And here, this certain bands image was transformed in a 3D, uh, in a, in a three, uh, um, 
uh, channels uh, information which preserves the similarity. So these areas, they are basically similar. In RGB, we can have areas which looks like being similar in color. However, in reality, in the multispectral data, they are different. So this kind of sensing is a kind of microscope which is transforming non-visual data in something visual. And this is very important for all systems because we have to operate the system with uh, graphical interfaces. I have an example of uh, uh, transforming uh, 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 low resolution, like Sentinel at 20 meter, in a high resolution sensor. So we train networks with terastatic data and we transform 20 meter resolution in 6 meter resolution data. So it's another kind of transformation of the data, which is very important. So this is a kind of sensor, artificial sensors, uh, uh, transforming and enriching the information. Uh, we go now to the uh, problem of uh, semantic relationship. So uh, in uh, uh, text, we deal with documents described by word. And uh, doing the analysis of the words, we can understand the topic in the document. We apply the same uh, technique in such a way to fill the semantic gap in between the uh, image, satellite images, and the computer, the algorithmic processing. So we extract words in terms of signature polarimetry. In this example, uh, we make uh, uh, apply a latent directly allocation, a generative model, and we obtain new uh, classes, new topics. So these new topics, they reveal uh, uh, parameters of the land cover, which otherwise they are not visible in a classical approach. These methods, they are further developed on a Boltzmann machine going in the field of deep learning. So uh, we are at the edge of uh, uh, maybe revolution in the technologies of quantum resources. So quantum intelligence, uh, it's referring to Earth's observation uh, with resources like sensor, computational imaging, uh, quantum sensor. And we have access already to quantum computing, uh, quantum machine learning, and quantum uh, signal processing and information theory. So all these aspects are now under investigation as I prepare the next generation of tools and technologies to exploit, to better exploit big heterogeneous data from Earth's observation. Uh, this is an example of a roadmap. Uh, so starting with the Earth's observation problem, we are now investigating uh, uh, phenomena in quantum like entanglement. We identify uh, particular cases with so phase unwrapping, uh, and we make uh, design of uh, quantum synthetic aperture radar, and we make studies for environment using existing quantum resources. And uh, uh, this is a planning for the future. Human understandable uh, artificial intelligence. So artificial intelligence should uh, extract patterns which are understandable. They must be presented with uh, adaptive and natural user interfaces. Uh, uh, the learning process should anticipate the user behavior and uh, the learning process should be a collaborative one, should be a dialogue. So we need to understand the user intention, the context of the application that is established by interfaces which is a performer dialogue. So this is an example of interface and the machine learning behind which uh, when clicking on the screen with a mouse we define the water body and the system is recognizing and bringing all the images with rivers. So with such a technology we make query by image content like uh, finding rivers, uh, 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 urban houses surrounded by forest uh, uh, railway infrastructure. So system is adaptive, does not involve any uh, pre-classification, it's adapting to what the user search. During this search, the user also can discover uh, uh, structures. Satellite image time series, they need more advanced uh, uh, interfaces because we need to deal with temporal evolution, but also with a spatial evolution. So we need to combine spatial temporal patterns and to define new kind of uh, categories and classifiers. Uh, we need advanced visualization in which uh, people they can immediately discover the model of the data, how the data is grouping in such a way that can better understand outliers or the classes before doing uh, machine learning. We can also verify machine learning and uh, 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 classification procedures. 
uh, all these methods, which are, are reflected in implementing algorithms, they have to be implemented in tools and uh, platforms. So these tools in this moment, they are web-based, they are distributed because uh, today, the modern data, they are open and free. Uh, they need to be timed relative to the interaction of the operator. So the operator should click on the image and get a result in seconds. They are based on cloud computing. They go to be a strongly federated system. And the trend today is uh, to take advantage of the evolution in the knowledge technologies developed by the blockchain. Example of our system, it is a uh, uh, Association Image Library and IOD, uh, which is a data mining and noise discovery, uh, in which at DLR, in, uh, for the ground segment of TerraSalix, we integrated the red modules in the ground segment, existing ground segment, with our help directly, in such a way to have the algorithms close to the data, the big data, and uh, uh, providing uh, tools like uh, indexing the data, uh, relational database, query by image example, and uh, advanced uh, uh, semantic uh, understanding of the data. Uh, with these tools, we uh, could index uh, database of 300 cities all around the world, uh, uh, obtaining 1,300 semantic levels. And later, with statistical methods, analytical method, we can characterize the city. So we have quantitative information, semantic and quantitative, like a fingerprint of a city, where we can uh, analyze uh, jointly various regions of the Earth, so uh, finding common patterns in between uh, various uh, urban uh, settlements. Satellite image time series. So it's a TerraSadix time series after the tsunami in uh, Sendai in 2011. So the understanding of the time series itself, uh, it is beyond the visual perception. We need to transform to extract the classes, which again, they are spatial temporal classes, which is have quantitative characterization of evolution in time, and a class, which is actually a data tube itself, uh, uh, should be uh, categorized semantically and represent the results in a simple way, like uh, uh, data analytics, uh, agriculture before the tsunami, destruction and recovery, airport, uh, recovery, uh, flooded areas and how they uh, mitigated aquaculture dis uh, destructed. So we need to synthesize information from big data in simple analytical format to be understood by the users. Visual data mining is one of the tools which allows to discover actually particular patterns. So many times uh, clusters, compact clusters like forest or agriculture, they are not so important as outliers. So important things, important patterns, they could be uh, uh, in these outlayers. Uh, uh, patterns like this, uh, which is, uh, show a different projection of the data set, so the data set is multidimensional, a single projection is not always relevant. They show again the behavior of the data, and this can also be used for verification clusters and uh, the accuracy. Mainly because in our observation, uh, the reference data set is very expensive uh, and uh, very limited in uh, size. So. We go now in our, our exploratory visual analysis, in which uh, uh, I explain how to use uh, uh, virtual information and uh, autoencoders, uh, deep learning, to transform the data. So in here, we transform the sensor uh, certain bands uh, in a three bands uh, in such a way to preserve similarities, dissimilarities, which are beyond the visual perception. So we develop methods based on classical virtual information, information theory, uh, communication channel, and also with the autoencoders, so enhancing the performance of uh, visual data. Uh, synthetic aperture radar is far to be uh, considered an image. Synthetic aperture radar is a bidimensional, uh, two-dimensional representation uh, of uh, echoes reflected by uh, uh, ground structure. So, uh, uh, synthetic aperture radar are uh, uh, actually uh, signals modulated to amplitude, frequency, and phase. We cannot see it. So synthetic aperture radar also has a very particular property, among others, it's just an example. So taking the spectrum of the uh, data uh, and extracting a subband contain an equivalent antenna. So we have a physical meaning in the data. So the fully transform is related to the look angle of an beautiful antenna uh, to the scene. So in these radar images, we have object like this, which we can encounter many places, and we need to verify if they are really identical or not. 
And we develop methods which are transforming the data in space and time, and we can identify if the objects are different or not. So the movement is not a movement because of the movement of the object. It's a movement which actually reflects the change of the uh, phase and frequency. Computing this uh, signature uh, can understand if images are representing similar or dissimilar objects. We have also uh, particular properties of the sensor. So here I choose an example from Iconos. In the multispectral image, we have this configuration of uh, vehicles on the highway. The panchromatic, the same vehicles, they appear in different configurations. The sensor has a switch in time. So it means we have an interesting parameter in uh, the sensor data, the time, which could be uh, used to extract uh, additional information. In Sentinel-2, uh, observing planes, uh, they have a strange behavior. They are decomposed. Uh, it's again a parameter of the sensor, which is important in information extraction. Uh, um, the tandem X, it's a formation flying in which we have a diversity in the satellite position. We have a baseline in space and a baseline in time. Uh, using also the properties of the synthetic aperture radar, like uh, azimuth uh, multi looking, we can obtain information. Uh, for uh, ship detection and uh, velocity estimation, which otherwise cannot be. So in here, we are using full information about the orbit, formation flying geometry, and the parameter of the sensor, and the sensor mode is our way to extract information, which otherwise from a single sensor be extracted. So that's an example in which, like a parallax, we can uh, demonstrate the uh, detection of the moving the speed of the uh, ship. So we go now uh, deeper in uh, the deep learning. So deep learning, uh, it is a field which is uh, uh, today extremely popular. So in the last uh, uh, year, have been published uh, uh, every month more than 500 papers on deep learning, only in deep learning. So it's a huge uh, investment in research uh, and uh, trying to find application and uh, new ideas in the field of deep learning. So here uh, uh, proposed a framework for uh, content-based image retrieval uh, in deep learning, in which we have to deal with uh, feature extraction, similarity metric, uh, having the relevant feedback to implement a dialogue in such a way to make the best selection of uh, paths in, in the satellite imagery. So uh, the uh, feature extraction, which was a classical approach in any uh, image interpretation, including verse observation, so extracting like um, multispectral signature or magnetic signature, uh, uh, structure, texture, uh, geometrical parameters, is now replaced by uh, deep features which are extracted by uh, 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 deep architecture like a CNN. Uh, deep architecture also, which they have to deal with a feature coding in such a way to have a much better uh, recognition of the complicated patterns which appear in. Uh, uh, satellite images. Uh, uh, deep uh, features they need fine tuning, changing from a sensor from a data set to another set. The uh, model must be updated. And fine tuning is a technology which is uh, really very valuable in Earth observation because it could actually uh, take advantage of limited training, which again in Earth observation they are uh, very expensive and very small compared with computer vision. and uh, uh, yet maintain uh, very good performance of the models. So this is an example on uh, the uh, database uh, UCD method uh, in which we have the uh, features which uh, they are colored uh, according to the labeled data. So the database has 21 classes, which class are 200 uh, uh, optical imageries. Uh, after applying a deep learning, uh, that begins to be grouped somehow and after uh, fine tuning, the feature generating, they are almost perfectly grouped. So it was an example uh, of uh, influence and uh, benefit of uh, fine tuning. We go now to uh, uh, deep learning, converting them from classifiers in segmentation. So very high resolution uh, uh, satellite image. They need uh, really image segmentation for application like cartography. So in here, actually, we exploited knowledge about the uh, nature of the image. So we know that objects they are characterized by borders, by edges. And in here we in, ingest edges uh, in the network. 
uh, enhancing the performance. So this is a, a, a building ensemble uh, uh, which was segmented with a classical CNN and with a class in the CNN which was boosted by injecting the each information. So it's evident on the parking lot that the segmentation of the car is much better. So existing information we know about should be injected into the network. We need to take advantage of the knowledge we have, the models we have about our scene for the day. And having this concept in mind, uh, we go now to explainable deep learning, in which we develop methods to extract physical parameters. We take advantage of the knowledge of the physical models, because we know about the sense of polarization wavelength is in a single. We know uh, uh, sometimes properties of uh, the object uh, or models. Uh, we know the image formation, like double bouncing, specular backscattering. And we want to learn from all these phenomena in such a way to have a better identification of the object. So we want to uh, disconnect from uh, uh, methods which are applied for the um, object recognition and inject existing knowledge, physical model, in such a way to understand complexity of the Earth observation data. So in here, we work on the polarimetry. So we are learning the uh, classical uh, polarimetric signature, like multiple volume uh, surface uh, scattering. Uh, knowing them, they also they have quantity, uh, uh, quantitative descriptor, low, uh, medium, and uh, high entropy. Uh, and we train networks with polarimetric data, and we apply the data to uh, dual or single polarization. We obtain now signatures from the single or dual polarization, which in the past have been possible to be obtained only from the full polarization. So the model is generalizing uh, and extending the physical uh, scattering and extracting this for uh, single polarization data. We go further and exploit uh, the basic property of the synthetic aperture radar of the spectral analysis, which is uh, equivalent to a different antenna. So cutting the spectrum and doing the Fourier analysis, we obtain like different antenna looking to that. So we make uh, the short time Fourier transformation of the data. We obtain a multi-dimensional signature. And based on this signature, uh, uh, we demonstrate that they are characteristic for various kinds of buildings. And we integrate this in the network. And we enhance the uh, prediction of the uh, data for urban areas or urban classes, which is have difference in scattering uh, with several percent. So we can enhance the recognition of urban and made objects. Definitely, if the scattering is uh, uh, uniform, diffuse in all direction, like it was a water or agriculture, or uh, you know, in the case of uh, forest, uh, we do not have uh, real enhancements. This property doesn't exist. However, for objects, structure, with the have these directional properties, we can enhance and extract the information. So I will conclude now, letting some uh, uh, time for questions. So today in our, uh, uh, say, big data and artificial intelligence, uh, we rely mainly on the uh, uh, areas uh, emergent uh, under the data science, artificial intelligence and information architecture. So the frame today was mainly to bring intelligence to the data, so bringing the algorithm to the data. It was a concept which in the past uh, few years was the uh, most important concept in all fields of data, uh, big data, not only Earth observation. So in Earth observation, actually, as a trend, it is now to go from the data to go to the sensor, to the source of information. So this means combination of imaging, combination sensing, so moving the intelligence to the sensor in such a way to uh, uh, enhance the amount of information the sensor can capture and potentially reduce the data volume with relevant information and even better information. And also the methods of artificial intelligence and machine learning to be explainable. So have an explainable intelligence in such a way to extract uh, information uh, which is pertinent, physical parameters, quantitative parameters, and also to extract this information and qualify, give all this a measure of trust. It's not enough to have a classification of the image. Uh, is not enough to have the quantitative evaluation of a biomass. It's important to give a uh, um, uh, uh, trust interval for the measurements, uh, mainly because it deals with remote sensing, where 
we do not have access to for the verification. So I'm concluding now the presentation and I uh, uh, look for the uh, uh, questions. Uh, yes, thank you, <clears throat> Miai. Thank you very much. Uh, and thank you for this fascinating presentation. I think you have to press on the camera. I cannot activate you. If you want to be back, you have to press on the left camera button. Yes, yes. thank you. So it's much more personal. Thank you. Okay. Wow, it's fascinating. As I have so many questions myself. So I'm I am as here, I'm the moderator and organizer. I start first. Because um, what are you working now, right now on, and what which project, uh, what are you doing exactly, and what would you like to do next? Uh, uh, good question. <laughs> so, in this moment, uh, I would like uh, to take all this body of knowledge developed uh, with a team, with the colleagues, uh, for my PhD, because it's very important to have. Uh, people which they have knowledge in this field. And uh, uh, definitely continue as a part of deep learning, artificial intelligence, like algorithms, to be um, developed and uh, to be used for Copernicus, for the European uh, uh, satellite platform, to extend this from synthetic aperture radar and uh, multispectral Sentinel-1 and 2, which are the same medium resolution, high resolution, to go also in a deeper physical parameter like Sentinel-3 and uh, Pi, and also to go to the X explorer uh, because in there we have really completely different approaches which are behind the integration of gravitational data that could help a lot in uh, understanding seismic, uh, which is complemented by internet. But also, in, you know, I'll uh, to go to new concepts in which to make the uh, design of intelligent missions. Also, because in this moment, uh, having a mission in space, a small satellite, nano satellites, is a technology available to them. And uh, uh, almost every university could have a uh, configuration of satellites and uh, make experiments and uh, demonstration in orbit uh, with new artificial intelligence. So artificial intelligence in the world, uh, it is one of the objectives. Uh, in this point. Okay, thank you. So I encourage the audience and the participants to also ask questions because my second one is um, I know from our last meeting in Venice, in our AI for You meeting, you said you are really interested in other people working on similar projects and similar work. What are you uh, looking for? If I would uh, contact you. If what are you looking for? Other researchers, scientists, or maybe even users or uh, people who are you looking for? Somebody. For uh, everything which is which uh, who is enthusiastic on uh, this topic, so I start with the users. I believe in this moment that this observation uh, could broaden the application. And the application uh, might be completely uh, surprising us at this moment. Definitely, for this is needed that uh, knowledge about this observation data and information uh, is penetrating in other communities. So definitely, probably uh, closer to the Internet of Things, uh, but also social media. Uh, uh, exposome uh, uh, like Monadis ex extension uh, because uh, mainly fields which uh, they require uh, uh, global observation and also observation for a long period of time. For satellites observation is for the moment the only global periodic and long time observation. Okay, yes, and now and, um, I have Alessandro Safiotti, our partner in AI for you. He has a question. Thank you. Fantastic talk, he says. Fantastic talk. So a compliment to you. You know that AI for You has an open call for challenges. Are you planning to submit any of the challenges that you listed in your talk? It would be so nice. Yes, yes, and uh, definitely I would like to do this, and also to uh, to try to stimulate uh, uh, PhD students and uh, young researcher to contribute to this. Yes, for sure. Great, because as I heard in Venice, it, you shall do it for the first challenge soon. It's until the middle of March. No? So, and then for the audience who has no clue what we're talking about, there we are having uh, open challenges. And very soon after challenges are clear, we're going to have open calls. 
there are SMEs, organizations, research, uh, universities can apply uh, for even single researchers for these open calls. And there will be another cafe session just about open calls. So as soon as we are coming close to the open calls, there will be one and you will see and you will get an invitation. I have another question. Um, uh, is this data which you are now, we, we understand, uh, is this really available for, um, for a city, for um, public um, universities, schools? Can anybody access this data? An artist? Um, yeah, I, I cannot mention them all. A commercial company? <laughs> yes, so the, the Sentinel data, the Copernicus data, uh, it is uh, open and free. So uh, he's already uh, put it at uh, disposition, all the tools and system to access the data. And everyone could access the data in any quantity. Uh, it's willing to process. And that is a, a, another point of change of paradigm. So this was not uh, not the case a few years ago. So such yeah. images have been generated. Now, free data, open data, that in principle should be a huge impact on its uh, uh, developer communities, researcher, because yeah. new, many ideas could be developed if you have some material, the data is there. And also that it's a, a, chairman, a chance for application. So to spread, to enrich the application, to discover new fields, to valorize the um, satellite acquisitions. Yes. yes. So again, open the data, which is a fantastic uh, opportunity in this moment uh, at global scale, because this, it doesn't refer only to Europe, it refers to all the world. Yes. Yes, I just got the same question from Martin Hesselmeyer. Thank you. I know him personally he's from Germany. This, um, and it's the same question. Is the, is the data open? And so I, so there are these questions. And I would say whoever has interest, because we are ending very soon this session, but there are so many questions, <laughs> um, that you may directly write to me, I, if you have more questions, as well as to me, I can also forward it to me. I and uh, please feel free to ask these questions. And it would be great also if you participate in the challenges which are soon coming up. But in order to be now on time, I want to thank you very much, Mihai. And um, it's totally fascinating. <laughs> I myself, I'm thinking what I want to do with the data. So. <laughs> I will come up with my own ideas. And um, and as every all the time, I will now introduce shortly the next um, presentation for next week. And also feel free, of course, if you want to be one day a speaker, just drop me a message. The next live uh, cafe session will be on February 5th, next Wednesday. And it, this time it has a question as a title. It basically says, are non-diverse AI research and de development teams risking bias in innovative algorithms and artifacts? The speaker is a lady, Huma Shah, a researcher from Coventry University, UK. So I'm very happy to welcome her next week. And you will get automatic your invitations. If anybody wants to drop out of the email list for this cafe, just also tell me and you're out at once. And again, thank you everybody. And this was very fruitful and bye-bye. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you and uh, goodbye. Good night. A goodbye, no, not a good day. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> bye bye.